In this chapter, we are going to take a look at a conditional execution in Lua. And I named this chapter this way because you might know conditional execution already from working with macros in MA2. If you've worked with conditional execution in macros before, you might know that it's a great feature, but it's pretty limited in what you can do with it. And if that was a point of frustration for you, I have some good news for you. Conditional execution in Lua is powerful and really fun to use. So uh, let's take a look. All right, first of all, let's copy and paste the code over to the console and run it. Copy, and then going to paste it in here. Conditional execution. All right. Now I'm going to run it. Oh, and by the way, it has an error. Let's see, and expect it to close function in line near end of file. All right, that's interesting. Uh, let's take a look at 42, line 42. This is a great example. All right, uh, 42. So we are missing an end somewhere. All right, let me double check this. Um, else if in Lua. Right. Okay, that's interesting. So that should be fixed. And then uh, let's go over here. All right, I'm Jonas. Three. Go. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at the code. Um, we're now, you know, asked for a lot of input and then received some weird command line feedback output as a result. So uh, let me just go through those four examples step by step and then I think it makes a lot more sense. Now the first example is a simple condition expressed with the help of the if keyword. Now the idea here is that if the condition between the if and the then is true, then the code between them end and the if is executed. Um, <laughs> let me let me just let me just uh, go through that with you right here. So um, this appears the condition, and if that sort of turns out to be true, then the code of this if statement is executed. So anything between sort of the condition and then uh, this end part down here. And I want to apologize slightly for the salty language here. Uh, it's a reference to one of my favorite comedians at the moment. Um, it's Bill Burr. So if we enter Bill Burr, then we can see here <laughs> that uh, we go him, uh, we, we ask him to kindly go, uh, you know, fringe himself. So um, that's sort of the simplest way to write a condition. We just, um, you know, state a condition in this case. You can see here that we're matching against sort of the text input. And if that's true, then we are going to execute this code down here. All right. So, you know, in this case, we enter Bill Burr as a name, then we get greeted with a salty, um, but that very rare case, uh, appreciate it, go fuck yourself. Uh, that's one of his thing that he does with his fans, um, pretty funny. If you don't get that reference, uh, just Google Monday morning podcast on your favorite podcast player and listen through a few episodes. Uh, you're welcome, it's pretty fun. All right, uh, next up is an example showing you how you can use the if else statement, which is also great. As the name suggests, in this case, you set a condition, and if that condition is true, just like in our previous example, then that first uh, sort of you know block is executed. Um, if it's not true, however, then the else clause is executed, and that's sort of the cool thing here. You can um, sort of be very specific about it. You can essentially go, all right, you know, if this condition is true, then go ahead and do this. And then if any other case um, is happening, then go ahead and do that. 
And you can also see here that we have different ways of comparing or, or stating conditions. Um, so up here, we are sort of matching this um, text or string as we uh, referred in nerd terms um, to something else. And then here we are actually checking um, whether the number that's being input is smaller than 10. So you can see, you know, there's different ways of, of stating these conditions. Once we start working with numbers, we can actually do things like checking whether a number is smaller, smaller, equal to, greater, greater, or equal to, or equal, or not equal. You know, you get the idea. Um, in our third example, we can see something that we don't get in every programming language, which is nicely done in Lua, though. You can even check multiple conditions. So in this case, I decided to ask for an executor button mode, and depending on which one the user entered, um, yeah, by the way, this, this is a horrible example. Like, I have the user type out these things. What I would usually do is rather go something like, um, you know, one, two, and then three. So obviously I would actually have users instead sort of enter one of these modes. Um, we could actually rewrite that in just a second, but first let me just explain it to you. So um, what we do here is we, um, we kind of check these different conditions and um, you know, obviously what you would do here is sort of execute different gma.command statements, right? I mean, depending on what you wanna do, you would probably assign a different executor mode. Um, but what's really cool is that, you know, what you can also do here, for example, um, you know what, let's just rewrite this. So I'm actually going to go, um, don't forget we are receiving text here, so. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm going to go with the two here. And um, another thing, I'm going to go with mode equals three, then assigning mode flash. And now to the biggest sort of nicest way that you can use an else statement, we are finally going to go feedback invalid. Let me just use the single quotes here to be consistent. Invalid mode received and then should be B one through three. Let's just write it in this mathematical notation that we expect it to be within the range of full numbers of including one and three. Anyways, um, so that's sort of the best way to do these kind of things where you just have the user enter numbers because remember, um, you know, if you can write your plugins in a way that uh, your user only has to use the numpad plus the, the please key, that's super fast. They always have to sort of, you know, <sighs> open up the drawer to get to the keyboard that kind of just takes a lot longer to use your plugin in that case. Um, and what's cool here is that we can actually have like these three valid modes and then if the user mistyped, you know, we don't just continue, but instead we're like, hey, this is invalid, right? Um, you can actually check the cookbook section for how to turn this in a way where you will ask the user repeatedly for input until, um, you know, you get a valid um, result. And also one other thing while we're at it, you know, this is a really great um, demonstration for using these default values in gma.text input. Um, because now when we actually insert this over here, oh, see, it says something, something, then expect it near gma and that's in line 23. I messed up. Oh, right, yes, then, of course, okay. See, that's why it's great to have line numbers and also the um, system monitor open. <laughs> so now, uh, hey, what's your name? Whatever, I'm just gonna enter Jonas, nothing's gonna happen. Enter a number, sure. Um, let's just go with one and we can see here the number is smaller than 10, correct. Now what's interesting here is that, you know, we already have a default option. So if go is sort of your most common mode, then people can just go enter and that's it. Um, 
And that's, I think, really cool. And also to the point, if we now go, hey, uh, what's my name, Jonas, enter number, sure. And then if we now enter four, we can see invalid mode received. It should be one through three, right? So like that, um, this else if statement is really powerful. Uh, one thing you have to watch out for is that your syntax highlighting will also uh, sort of display it correctly if this, you know, happens. So um, if you have a space in between the else and the if, then um, let me just copy this in here as well. You know, um, in that case, you get like this really weird um, sort of error in here that says uh, end supposed to, you know, or, or sort of expected an end at the end of the line. Um, and the problem here is that, of course, else and if are valid keywords. So the syntax highlighting doesn't really help you here. Make sure that it's really else if. All right. Now, uh, on to the last example. Let's take a look at a few crazy operators that you can use. Um, and it's also really interesting. You can actually combine multiple conditions together and make it really powerful. So, you know, I could explain this to you really sort of in depth and in detail, but I think you get the point here by just looking at it. Um, so, you know, you can tell here that the end and the or kind of combine it. And by the way, what I also want to mention is, you know, you can do something like that. Um, let's say, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I can't really come up with a good example here on the fly, but essentially what you can also do is be like, hey, I have a, I have a condition where the number needs to be um, sort of something and smaller than 20 or completely other case. So you can even use brackets to kind of group your conditions together. It can get pretty powerful. Um, again, you know, simple is better. So um, the simpler you get, the better, um, you know, it, it kind of, the, the, the easier it is for you to not build any errors into the plugin by accident. Now, two things I want to point out here. First is the percent operator and the tilde equal sign. So let's take a look at that. The percentage sign is really interesting because it'll actually um, divide this number by that number and will give you the remainder. <laughs> so in this case, if num is a five, you know, the closest, the closest number that's dividable by two that's smaller than five, smaller or equal to five is four. So this operation will return a one. The point here is that whenever something percent sign two is equal zero, then this number can be divided by two. So this is how you actually can filter out an even number. A little tricky at first, but you get the hang of it. And uh, the, second, the second thing that I want to point out here is this tilde 10 operator. Um, that's essentially the operator that uh, tells you that, um, you know, num in this case is not equal to 10. So like that, you can also express something not being equal to something. There you have it, working your magic using conditional execution. This is really powerful stuff. So keep in mind that you can always just open up this example code and look up how to do it again. Um, yeah, in general, this is powerful stuff. Don't go too crazy. Don't go, you know, too, um, too wild with your, um, you know, conditions. Um, you want to keep it simple. Otherwise, you're going to confuse yourself really fast. But in general, this is a really powerful tool, especially when it comes to processing user input, as we just saw. So uh, whenever you want to look up these examples again, just come back to the file and even just copy and paste um, snippets out of this file into your plugins. Um, to kickstart your conditional execution.